Good morning. So, um, since class is cancelled today, um, and we have a certain amount of material which we must cover before the, the exam, I'm going to make a series of short videos which will cover the material that I was hoping to talk about in class today and will also enable you to finish um, the homework for Tuesday. So there's one more example I'd like to do from 12.5. It's the following. Find the volume above the cone z equals x squared plus y squared and below the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. Okay, so we're going to be computing um, the volume as an integral and in order to do this, first of all, we should have some idea of what the sketch looks like. So, um, we have a cone, like this, and it's capped by uh, the top of uh, part of a sphere. So this thing kind of looks like an ice cream cone. Okay, so, uh, so like this. Okay, and as... As you watch this, uh, a good idea might be to follow along by sketching with me, writing the stuff down with me, keeping a step ahead of me if you can. Okay, so we have the sphere, the sphere of radius 1, and um, it's the ice cream part of our ice cream cone. Okay, now, uh, so, so this is in three dimensions, three dimensional space, whoops. So we have the z-axis here. Okay. Now, the, the curve of intersection of these two surfaces is going to be... What is it going to be? The place where these two things meet. Well, it's, we need to project this into the xy plane. And as you can see, it's going to be a circle. So there's going to be some circle that's going to turn out to be the domain of our integration. Okay, so when we project this curve down into the xy plane, that's what we get. So this is the this is this curve of intersection that we're looking at inside the xy plane. Let's try to set up our integral and see what we come up with. So we want a volume, and the volume must be. So, so we're going to integrate over this region d in two dimensions. Okay. And what we want is the volume above the cone and below the sphere. So let's call the, the equation for the cone, let's call this one z1 or something. And let's call this one z2. So here, we want the upper half of the sphere. So if we solve for it, z would be equal to the square root, we'll take the plus square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared. Okay. That's, so, that's solving for z out of this equation and just taking the positive part because we only want the upper part of the sphere. Okay, and let's, let's call this one z2. So what is this volume we want? We want the volume over this, over this region. We want to take the upper surface minus the lower surface. Okay, that's, that's going to be how we get the, the volume element because if you think about it, so over a, over some point like this one, um, the height that we're going to be well, we want to make a volume element, so we we want some little rectangular block thing inside of this this thing. But the upper surface of the the height of this rectangular block will be the upper surface minus the lower surface. Okay, so that's the sphere. The equation for the sphere minus the equation for the cone. So we'll call it Z2 minus C1 dA. <clears throat> so as you know, that's how you compute a volume. Right, so let's let's work this out. The first thing we actually need to know is what is the equation of this uh, intersection curve. So <clears throat> the boundary, is, so D is the region enclosed by the circle, right? We need to know what the boundary is. So D is where these two things are equal. What we could do is to plug the equation of the cone into the equation of the sphere. Then we'll be squaring out the square root. So that, that should give us a nice, easy, easy equation to work with. So let's, let's say plug um, cone equation into sphere equation.
Okay. So so if we do this to to get the to get the boundary of this region D, so then we'll get x squared plus y squared plus z squared is the square of the square root. So that's x squared plus y squared. And all of this equals one. So two x squared plus two y squared equals one. Okay. And well, you know this is a circle of radius. What's the radius? Well, the right hand side here, x squared plus y squared equals something. This is r squared. So the radius is one over root two. Okay. So so now we know the, the region over which we're going to be integrating. It's the circular region in the xy plane. Um, of radius 1 over root 2. Let's see what, what we come up with when we plug things into our, our expression for the volume. So let's just leave the d as it is. z2 is the equation of the um, the equation of the sphere. So 1 minus square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared minus, right, we start with the upper surface minus the lower surface. So the equation of the sphere minus the equation of the cone and then we want dA so dA is dx dy after we figured out which way we want to do this it's symmetric in x and y so it's actually going to be equivalent if we do x first or y first it won't matter but if you look at this integral it's very nasty I mean there's no no matter what the region is that you're integrating here um, there, there's no way that we can actually integrate this because we have an inside function but its derivative doesn't show up in the integrand and that's so we can't make a substitution okay so in 12.5 what you've been learning about is using polar coordinates and this looks like a prime candidate for such a thing because you have this x squared plus y squared factor everywhere and we know x squared plus y squared is r squared okay so that's going to that's gonna make life a lot easier because we'll also have an r d r d theta when we replace dx dy, the area element, right? Remember this? So you have some little block in the x, y plane. It has side length delta y and delta x. And we instead of this, what we do is we, we think of um, a little segment like this which uh, we get by varying r so this side is delta r and this side is r whatever r this side, this if this length is r this is the origin zero and this is r then we know that that this side is r delta theta where we we move um we change here by theta, so this, the area of this thing is going to be r delta r delta theta, and in the limit this becomes r d r d theta. Okay, but and, and over here of course we have uh, delta x times delta y, which is the area element, and in the limit is as the number of blocks goes to infinity, this becomes delta x delta y. So we, we, we will replace delta x, sorry, dx dy by r dr d theta in the formula. And also we're working with a circular region. That's another clue that you should be using um, these uh, polar coordinates. This region d is very easy to describe using r and theta. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's first of all do that. Um, yikes. Okay, so, so how, how we do this? We want theta to vary from 0 to 2 pi, and r will vary from... I don't know why this stupid camera is going out of focus. Okay, sorry. So r is going to vary from 0 to the radius of the circle, which is 1 over root 2. All right. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this first one becomes square root of 1 minus r squared because x squared plus y squared is r squared minus the square root of r squared and then as we know dx dy is r dr d theta okay 
and now actually you can integrate both of these terms that are going to arise. So from here on out, it's just a straightforward um, integration problem. Okay, so let's see what we get. Uh, 0 to 2 pi. If we integrate the, this first one, it's 1 minus r squared times r. We'll make a substitution. We'll set 1 minus r squared equal to u. So du will be minus 2r dr. So we only have an r dr, we don't have a minus 2 dr. What, what, what we could do here is solve. So r dr, which is what we have in our integrand, is equal to minus 1 half du. Okay, so when, when we calculate this first integral, we will we'll be making this kind of substitution. And because it's a definite integral, we should also think about the bounds. So r goes from 0 to 1 over root 2. u will go from, when r is 0, u is 1. And when r is 1 over root 2, then u is 1 minus the square of 1 over root 2, which is 1 half. So u will go from 1 to 1 half. Okay, so this becomes... I'm just working with this first term, and I'm not worrying about the second one just yet. Because we don't need to make a substitution in the second case. So if we if we rewrite this first integrand, it's going to be the integral from 1 to a half of the square root of u. And then dr, r dr d theta. But r dr, as we know, is minus a half du. So minus a half du. Remember, you can only, when you make this kind of change, the only thing you can divide by like this is a constant. You couldn't, if you had some extra r factors which didn't show up in the integrand, you wouldn't be able to make the substitution because you couldn't divide by these extra factors. You can only divide by a constant when you make a substitution. And then we're still going to make our d theta integral. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's the first term, and then we still have the second term, so let's write it as a separate integral. Minus uh, the integral from 0 to 2 pi, and the, this is going to be, well, the square root of r squared is just r, r times r is r squared, and then dr d theta. Okay, and these are, these are both integrals which you can calculate, sorry, this, this is a double integral still. The r varies from 0 to 1 over root 2. Okay, so each of these integrals is, is very straightforward. Let's just do it very quickly. So 0 to 2 pi. <clears throat> In fact, as you watch this video, I recommend that what you do is, is turn it off and do each successive step. Um, so right now you should turn it off and finish the calculation. Then you can turn it on and check to see that you did work correctly. So here, this is u to the 1 half. When we integrate that, we get u to the 3 halves. Divide by the new power. And this is multiplied by minus 1 half. And we wanted to integrate this between 1 and a half. And we have to still take the theta integral. Minus over here, when we integrate r cubed, r squared, we get r cubed over 3. Between 0 and 1 over root 2. And then we want to still integrate d theta between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so this first one, um, dividing by a fraction is multiplying by the reciprocal, so the 2's will divide out. And then plug in these vari values, you get minus a half to the 3 over 2 times, and the, the th 3 is still in the denominator, so that's not like multiplying by 1 over 3. Minus minus 1 to 3 over 2 is just 1 over 3. <clears throat> so we just have some constant which we're integrating against theta. So the antiderivative of a constant is just the, that constant times by theta between the values 0 and 2 pi. And Sorry, this is just minus. The, over here the same kind of thing will happen. So we plug in our values, we get 1 over 2 to the half raised to the 3. That's 1 over 2 to the 3 halves times 3. 
and then minus when you plug in zero you're not going to get anything you're going to get zero over three so we can forget about that and again this is just a constant we're integrating with respect to theta so the antiderivative is just the constant times theta between zero and two pi okay so that's it when you plug in two pi for theta um, you, you get two pi times this number and two pi times this number when you plug in 0 for theta, you just get 0 in each case. So we get a, a factor of 2 pi everywhere. And then let's see what we end up with. Here we have 1 third minus 1 over 2 to the 3 halves times 3. And another factor of the same form, 1 over 2 to the 3 halves times 3. When we add up these two factors, we'll get 2 over 2 to the 3 halves times 3. So the two factor will divide out and you're left with a square root. Notice there's a third factor everywhere. We could pull out the third factor. So this is 2 pi over 3 times 1 minus. And then when we add these two, we get 1 over square root of 2. And that's the answer. So that is the volume of this ice cream cone. Okay. Thank you.